In studio, once again, my good friend from the law offices of Goldberg and Jones, Mr. Colin Amos. What's up, Colin? Just hanging. That's nice, man. Yeah, good to see good. you. You're looking good. It's good to be here. All right, let's start out with this here, and I love this because you always bring me in your list of questions, but this here, a Pennsylvania woman called 911 asking for a divorce. Dispatcher, 911, what's your emergency? I need a divorce. Can you make my husband leave? And police say they explained to the woman that a divorce is a civil matter and no, they could not make her husband leave the residence because no crime had been committed. They even cited the woman for misuse of 911. But, you know, in general, Colin, will the police generally make someone leave if they're called to the house to uh, solve the dispute? They generally don't. It's uh, First piece of advice, just don't call the police. I mean, you just don't want them out. One, they got better things to do. We want uh, our taxpayers' dollars used in a different Always way. Always better to handle things on a lower level Absolutely. unless someone is literally in a life-threatening situation. Wouldn't you agree with that? Absolutely. And it just you know, from a guy's perspective, you, you don't want the police out there. It's just not a, a, a fair fight, so to speak, no pun intended. And uh, when they come out, they might find that there is a, you know, a threat of violence and, you know, you just don't want to end up in, in going to jail or anything like that for uh, unnecessary reasons. But generally they say no, unless there's some crime committed or people call, hey, I want my kids and they call the police to help them get their kids. It's not a criminal matter. It's a civil matter. So what the police generally do or should do is say, hey, this is this is not our business. If you have a problem, call an attorney or find out other way to get through this a situation. Well, you know, uh, Colin, you deal with these situations all the time. In your estimation, what is the best way to initiate a divorce? Uh, is there but, a best way to do that? <laughs> not through the police. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, the, you know, I would first get a plan. As I always say, you know, educate yourself first. Don't just jump in there because, you know, I'm, I'm paid to resolve problems and just don't create more work for me but get a plan and then you know you file the divorce it's in uh, oregon washington california most states are no fault states so it's not about what happened you, you file it and then start working through the tough issues uh but getting that plan initially is critical what is the process or how can someone limit access to a residence during a divorce yeah that's a uh, you know like this one you know people want the other person out and they want them out now because there's high conflict um but unless there is that restraining order there's no quick way to get them out. Now, in Oregon, you, you file a divorce and then you ask for a motion for temporary orders in which you're saying the other party should leave uh, and I should have custody or whatever you want. But that can take a while. So it can sometimes be a bit strained when you're living in the same household. It's pretty icy cold. Now, in Washington, you know, we're in Clark County, just uh, just across the, the river. And that you can get into court much quicker. You know, within 10 days, you can get a, a temporary orders that will resolve how you know if the if you guys can't figure it out, the court can say, okay, you're going to move out, or we're going to have you move out and stay. The kids stay there, and then back and forth, what we call a nesting program with the kids. So there's all sorts of options. All right, Colin Amos is in studio from the law offices of Goldberg and Jones. If you have a question, one uh, eight hundred divorce is your telephone number. If you're facing a custody battle or a possible divorce, now the next question comes out of Forest Grove. It says, my girlfriend and I were cohabitating in my house, and we have. Children, ages six and four together, we have broken up, but she refuses to move out. How can I force her to leave? She works nights and I work days. Can I get custody? That's a tough one because essentially, while uh, you're not married, so that she doesn't have a legal right to the house, there could be some kind of domestic partnership claim she could make. But let's assume that that's because that's a harder case. Uh, effectively, she's a month to month tenant in, you know, in a landlord tenant situation. And so you can't just kick her out. Uh, so there's, there's ways that we try to work them out of the house, but otherwise you, uh, um, you know, you probably, the best thing is to deal with the custody issue first. So the fact that this, uh, gal works nights and he works days, he has a much better opportunity to pursue primary custody because, you know, she's not going to be there overnight. It's not a good parent, bad parent distinction. It's just a delineation of duties. Who's going to be available in the evenings to take care of these kids. You can't, if the, if, if she uh, has the kids and he's not there, she can't leave them with a, huh. a friend or a family member all the time. You know, dad's sitting there going, why, why shouldn't I have the kids? So he has a great uh, opportunity to pursue primary custody and work out a parenting plan. And then that'll resolve the house issue on the backside of, you know, because she's eventually going to have to move out. It's his house. All right. Next question coming from Portland. It says, my ex and I have a child together and we're never married. She relocated to another state two months ago with the children. We have decided to end the relationship. Do I have a say in where the children live? What are my rights as a father? And this is something that comes up, and you've talked about this before. Yeah, because uh, people uh, separate. They're trying to work on the, work on things, understandably. But usually what you do in a separation, and I know I come from a, uh, a 
particular background, usually what you do in a separation is the worst thing you can do in a divorce because you're you're working so hard to save the marriage or save the relationship that you set up bad precedents. And what happened here, you know, they probably separated. She says, I'm going to go live with my parents or whatever. And she's down there two months with the kids and it didn't work out. It doesn't you don't just get a reverse time and say, OK, now I want the kids back with me. Well, now they're in somewhat of a, a different routine. They're down there for two months. So do you have a say? Sure. But uh, once you get going and you have that two month uh, situation, it's going to be hard to get those kids back into, you know, back to living where where he's at. And so effectively, no, you know, as a as a objective matter, sure, you have a say, but you gave it away when she moved and it's been over two months. Um, and as far as rights as a father, I mean, you're still a father, even if there's a long distance parenting plan, California, Texas, New Jersey, uh, they're going to bridge that gap of uh, geographical distance and give you long distance parenting time. If it's that far time in the summer, spring break, uh, Christmas break, but you really need to ice a good deal down because you don't want to be paying for plane tickets and then have her not follow through with things. So details in your parenting at that point are critical. All right, Colin, one of the things we talk about every time you come on is the importance for people to call 1-800-DIVORCE and at least go through the initial consultation with you because there's no there's no pressure to buy or to you know purchase a, you know time with an attorney at that time but what you're trying to do is set them in the right direction so you can find out the situation and 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 give them the best guidance through the process because without any representation then you'll find yourself with a bad plan moving forward and you sure. might uh, risk losing too much money or time with your children yeah, that's right. And and when they call, I mean, people are surprised that I'll actually take their call. I'll talk to them on the phone <laughs> and answer questions. And most don't require a consultation because, quite frankly, I get a lot of people who have calls that I, I, I would feel bad if they came in and spent, you know, our consultation fees 95. They spent 95 and it was really they didn't need it. They had just some questions that needed answers. So I'll spend some time vetting out. Is there really something that we need to sit down in a consultation? If not, let me answer your question, send you in the right direction, and don't go shoot yourself in the foot. Absolutely. All right, great stuff. 1-800-DIVORCE is a telephone number. It's Colin Amos from the Law Offices of Goldberg and Jones. If you're facing a custody battle or a possible divorce, 1-800-DIVORCE is a telephone number. You can call. Colin will take your phone call and point you in the right direction. Great stuff, once again. Yeah, fun stuff. Always. Well, do you have any other ideas for how I can misuse the 911? Uh, no, don't, don't be calling the police. Just <laughs> okay. don't call the police. <laughs> well, you know, this came up a couple of weeks ago. I came across a story where a guy called 911 twice because he didn't like the way his mom was talking to him. And this is like a grown man living in the basement. And on the second time, they sent an officer out and he got arrested for misuse. It's like, no, you cannot call 911 to complain about your mom. I moron. wish it would happen because we get that call all the time. She's calling the police. She's calling the police. And they go out and they calm the situation and they leave. But, man, I wish they would just cite him more. They would maybe, uh, you know, cut back on the uh, issues that they have to deal with. All right, great stuff. Colin Amos, uh, we'll catch up with you here soon. All right, sounds good. All Thanks, right, Colin Amos, Law Office of Goldberg & Jones, 1-800-DIVORCE is the telephone number.